peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous, and in today's video, we're going to design and 3D print a custom easel. So stick around to see how we do it. So we've opened up Fusion 360. We're going to save it and rename it. Hey, that rhymed. <laughs> nice. Then we're just going to create our rough sketch. Yep. So what we're going to do is we're going to design half of it on this side of the y-axis here. And then we're going to end up mirroring it onto the other side. This will prevent us from having to design both sides and, and save be, us some time. And it will be more symmetrical, like where we want it to be. Yeah. So I'm just going to do kind of a rough drawing. All right, so now we have the really bad basic shape here. We'll go ahead and <laughs> add some dimensions to make it look right. All right, so now that we have it fully constrained, you can see it turns the blue lines into solid black lines. Now we can kind of refine this design a little bit to get it to look more like what we want. So again, the reason we designed past this line is we have to make a joint for this side of the easel to combine with the other side of the easel that we'll, again, just copy over a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But before we start copying stuff over, we would kind of want to make the other side uh, or rather we want to refine this joint right here and because we're designing in some PLA material and we're working with plastic and 3D print we have to make some flexibility in it uh, so that it can snap into place so what we're going to do is we're going to actually delete this line here and we're going to do some more um, refined sketch so I want to kind of create a cutout for the plastic material to be able to kind of bend in place. So I'm just gonna kind of do this real quick. To get a little fancy, we'll go ahead and put a curved line here. Just to give it a little bit more pizzazz. <laughs> What do you think about that? Yeah, it looks really neat. So that is going to be this side of it. And again, we put these breaks in here so that the material can bend when snapping in place because this is we're going to have a little kind of little divot here. Uh, well, the divot will be on the other side. This will have the little ball, um, ball that we can snap it into the divot. But we'll design that later when, once we make this three dimensional. Mm -hmm. But for now, this is a good sketch, good start. Um, let's go ahead and add some fillets to it. So it won't poke anyone? <laughs> yeah, we don't want to poke anyone. I think that's pretty good. So now, so we're going to draw a construction line right on the y-axis. Now we'll go ahead and mirror. And the reason I didn't highlight everything is because we don't need to copy this part over because the other side is going to have a different design to connect to this. But we do want to connect the main part of this thing over there. So that's why we did that. Now we're going to select our mirror line, which is our construction line on the y-axis. And you can see it brought the parts over that we wanted to bring over. Hit OK. All right, there we go. So now we can design the other side of this design. So what we're gonna do, let's see. We're gonna have to finish this out. And what I wanna do is draw some more basic shapes here. Okay. 
Let's add some dimensions. So that's our two halves basically. We did build in a millimeter gap in between the two sides. Again, we're gonna have a ball here on this side and a divot on this side that these two can snap together. But because of horizontal expansion in our prints, this gap will actually be much smaller. Uh, and again, it's really not that big, one millimeter. And we have basically a two millimeter tolerance here. So we're gonna leave that like that. And now we can expand or um, extrude. extrude both sides of this and then finish out our design. So I actually want to create this in two different components. So I'm going to finish a sketch here. I'm going to select this one and extrude it. E for extrude. It's just going to be five millimeters thick. And then this is now we'll call what the right side. Okay. And I'll review my sketch and now I can just select these parts. Okay, extrude that five millimeters. And now body two is going to be left side. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide this side. Hide the sketch, I don't need the sketch anymore. And now I can play around with this to add the ball on both sides of this. And this is really easy. So I'm just gonna select the top view like that. I'm gonna sketch, and I'm actually gonna sketch on this plane here. It kind of flipped me around there, but that's okay. Then I'm gonna project this line here, P for project, and I'm gonna select this line. That way I can use this line as a measurement tool to get to the exact place where I want the ball to be. So okay there. And now I just need to create a point. So I'm going to go to point and I'm gonna find the midsection on that line, which should be two and a half millimeters, but I'm gonna use the easy delta or triangle X there as my midpoint. And then I'm just gonna plot a point and this should be exactly seven millimeters, but I will dimension that out. Yep. Perfect. And it's at the midpoint. So now that I have my point there, I'm gonna use that point to create my circle. Perfect. Now I'm gonna extrude this out. Two millimeters. I'm gonna review that sketch because I'm gonna project it or re-extrude it out on the other side. I'm gonna do that by going to extrude. And instead of going from profile plane, I'm gonna start it from an object. And my object is gonna be here. And now I can extrude that out. Well, I gotta select a profile first. There we go. And I'm going to go, I guess, minus two over here. Join. Okay. So now to make this a ball, I'm just going to select the outer edge on that one. I'll go ahead and select the outer edge on this one as well. And then I'm going to do a fillet. And because it's four millimeters uh, big, I'm gonna do a two millimeter fillet, which should turn into half of a sphere. There we go, pretty nice, huh? Mm -hmm. So that is one side. one side of our easel done. Now we're basically gonna do the same thing to the other side. And here's what's really cool is, this is our Y axis. The center of this ball is our Y axis. So we're just gonna use the same sketch and we're gonna cut out the divots with that. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hide this side of the body. 
And you see my sketch is still here. So I'm going to select that, E for extrude. And yes, again, well, I'm going to do from an object again. And this time I'm going to select this. And then I'm going to go in two millimeters. And this is going to be a cut operation. And then I'm going to do the same thing, extrude. But this time I'm going to do from right here. Just like that. And now, just like before, I'm going to add a fillet to that edge, which is the inside edge of that circle, or of that cylinder. And I'm going to select that one, do a fillet, and this is going to be two, two millimeters. So now that you can see, there's a, a nice little cut or divot for that ball to go into. Bring back our other side, you can see the ball fits nicely in there, perfectly. And we can further confirm this, that it's going to work by taking advantage of this section analysis tool. And then just looking at it from 2.5 millimeters, because it's 5 millimeters thick. So this is the center of our easel, and you can see got a nice millimeter gap on each side again horizontal expansion will probably fill this in a little bit tighter but that's okay that should look good mm -hmm. so let's go print it all right so we're in our slicer ultimaker kira we'll click the folder icon and import our stl file Now we're going to have to rotate it so it lays flat on the surface, so it doesn't print like that. <laughs> now we'll move it off the center so we can print both sides of the easel at the same time. We're going to just go to the folder icon and just open the other SDL file. Open it. We'll rotate it like the last one. I don't think this one will need any supports, but we'll check. The only thing I think would need supports are the little balls, but it should be fine. So now we'll check our heat temperature. So now let's slice it. It looks like it will take three to four hours. Oh, and we don't need a raft. That was for a different print. Let's re-slice it. And it'll take it only about um, an hour and a half. So that's good. Let's preview it. Now we can save to file. And then print it. So now it's time to assemble it. Yep. So a painting can actually fit in it. That's right. And we did it pretty easily so that you can just push in it or push it in. Just like that. Snap it together. Can we test it out? Go ahead. 
looks like a painting will fit on it. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so it looks really nice and it fits this painting perfectly. So it will probably fit anything that is flatter, but like a little bit thicker that it won't just fall off. Cause it's an easel. Mm -hmm. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get my every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.